In this video we're going to do some more work with vectors. In a simple model for the motion of a car, its velocity v at time t seconds is given by v is equal to the quantity 3t squared minus 2t plus 8i plus 5t plus 6j meters per second. In part a we're asked to calculate the speed of a car when t is equal to zero. Speed is a scalar quantity. It's the magnitude of velocity. So velocity is a vector quantity as it has both magnitude and direction. The speed has just got a magnitude. So what I'm going to write is t is equal to zero. So when t is equal to zero, v is going to be equal to 8i plus 6j meters per second. So 8i plus 6j meters per second. All I've done is subbed in now t is equal to zero. We can say that the magnitude of velocity is equal to the speed. So speed knows no direction. So for example, if I had minus 8i minus 6j, the speed would still be the same. If I had 8i minus 6j, if I had now 6i plus 8j, the speed would still be the same. We can calculate now the magnitude of the velocity using Pythagoras, and we can say it's the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared. So we can say now the magnitude is going to be the square root of 100. So we can say now the speed will be equal to 10 meters per second. So all we're doing, as we did in the introduction, we looked now at finding the speed given a velocity vector. So as you can see, this would work now if I had minus 6i plus now 8j meters per second, it would have the same speed, but quite clearly a different velocity. We're now asked to find in part b the values of t for which the velocity of the car is parallel to the vector i plus j. Let's first do some basic revision. When we're looking at now i and j notation, i is a unit vector in the x direction. So if I drew this up, what we've got is a unit vector. Unit means that we've got length 1. So that's i and this is j. And again, that's something we looked at before. So let's just move that into place. And that will sit now on the y-axis. So these now are i and j. So if I put these on, we're going to have this vector right here. This is going to be j. And this one is going to be i. This now is a length of 1. Hence, unit. One way we can do this is a representation geometrically. You certainly don't have to, but this is an option. So what I'm going to do, let's grab up uh, some triangles. Let's grab up these and we will do these. So what we're going to have then, I often work with these triangles now, is the following scenario. And this is one way you can look at it. What I've got then is this vector right here. Now this is going to be i plus j. So when I've got i plus j, we'll have something like that. That's what we're doing. We're going one across and one up. Now consider that this is going to be parallel to this vector. So what we can say, the i component will be 3t squared minus 2t plus 8. And then the j component will be 5t plus 6. So when we look at similar triangles, we can say the following. We can say 3t squared minus 8t plus 8 over 5t plus 6 must be equal to 1 over 1. And that is just one way that you could look at it. Or alternatively, if this is equal to 1, then this is equal to 1. You can set them equal. 3t squared minus 2t plus 8 over 5t plus 6 will be equal to 1 over 1. So let's go ahead and solve for that. 3t squared minus 2t plus 8 will be equal to 5t plus 6. Now simply multiplying both sides by the 5t plus 6. Rearranging the quadratic in t with the right hand side set to 0, 3t squared minus 7t plus 2 will be equal to 0. That looks like it'll factor. We'll have now 3t minus 1, and then we'll have now t minus 2 equal to 0. So solving, t will be equal to 1 third, and then we've got t will be equal to 2. Those are both positive quantities. We're asked to find the values of t, so we've got 2, and t is going to be 1 fourth third, or t is going to be equal to 2. This is one way that you could look at it. 
This now is the vector i plus j. If I wanted to show that here, all I've done on my drawing is gone across that i plus j and now the resultant vector is this right here. Okay, so that's all that I've done to do that. And you don't have to, but it's an option for you. Okay, in part C it says, why would this model not be appropriate for large values of T? Well, let's consider T being 10, okay? So after 10 seconds, that's going to be 300 minus now the 20 plus 8. So that's going to give me, what, 288? 288 meters per second in the I direction is pretty quick. So why would it not be appropriate for large values of t? As t gets very large, v is going to get very large. And this is a car. If you said that this was some particle being projected at a ridiculous speed, so for example, if it was a gun, um, then those kind of speeds would be realistic, potentially, for uh, relatively large values of t. But for very large values of t, this is not going to be uh, possible for the car to achieve that. So anything along those lines for part C now would be perfectly fine. These questions generally carry only one mark. So there we go, a basic question looking at using velocity vectors and then now the scalar equivalent, which is speed, and then looking now at a velocity vector that's traveling in the direction or parallel to another.